They come in, sit down, and try to remote God. I don't like that song. Well, mute it. I don't like that preacher. Change churches. That's too loud. Cut it down. You don't have a remote God. Uh, the wind blows where it listeth. Get in and find waters to swim in. We are so delighted that you stopped in today. Our desire is to provide you with scriptural teaching to bolster your personal walk with God. Trust you'll enjoy the selection. May you receive it with an open heart and a spirit of prayer. God bless you all. In Louisiana, we are tremendously blessed to have brother and sister Tenney as our leaders. Would you welcome him, please? Well, praise God. Somebody shout his name. The star of this entire endeavor, Jesus. And everybody said, Devil, no. you're not going to enjoy because of the times. We may as well tell him. Brother Ray Johnson, what a blessing. And he didn't tell half the story. What a unique man. Tells about all the souls he wins, and he don't tell you about the time I pick up the phone and say, Ray, come down here and get on the bulldozer. I got to have some ditches fixed. And you know what? He'll come. That's that kind of people, like so many of you here, that make this movement what it is. And what Brother Anthony said about being submissive is absolutely true. He's not just saying that. And I'm, I'm, I'm thanking God for Brother Anthony and for Sister Mickey. Amen. They are two Amen. of the most wonderful people. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You've heard of the power behind the throne? She's standing right down there and her name's Mickey. I got the holy wows this morning. I ought to be a, all kind of protocol things that I don't have time to talk about. I want to thank God for my daughter being here. This time last year, the doctors didn't know if she would live or die. Terry, raise your hand, honey. I thank God she's here and alive and healed, being used of God. Death can't kill what won't die. Thank God for my, for my family. Uh, Terry Tickle, Dr. Tickle, who was here yesterday and is uh, a leader with the Methodist prayer group. He has 2,000 Methodist churches that are now engaged in 24-hour chain of prayer, and he's got more degrees than a thermometer. But he said he had never in his life been impacted by a meeting. You know what he said? He said, he left yesterday, the last thing he told me, he said, I've got to take this to the Methodist. Yes. Oh, 
over in the GA Mangan Center, he's got a book on praying through the book of Acts. He's got the Methodist praying through the book of Acts. But it's really better for Pentecostals than it is for them. Making of a prayer room. Uh, this man's material is, is, is outstanding. I don't know what God's doing. He's blowing my mind. You know what I told him when he told me that? He said, I got to take this to the Methodist. I said, and don't sprinkle it on them. Immerse them. And you know what he said? He said, I always do. It's coming a revelation. If you don't have uh, the prayer book, first of all, prayer, how to set up a prayer program in your church, Sister Tenney's book, it's in the foyer. And the other one, I, I wrote a book uh, last year, this year, Some Things I Wish I'd Have Known, especially for young preachers. It's letters I've written to young preachers over the years. Uh, it, it'll help you. I even talk about the signing of the affirmation statement in it. Boy, I got brave. One uh, chapter in there uh, is entitled, Never Slap a Man Who Chews Tobacco. Uh, <laughs> You wish you'd have known that if you ever tried. Right. Amen. Got another chapter on problem with bucket seats. Problem with bucket seats is everybody doesn't have the same size bucket. I'm all right. Nobody's uptight but Brother Anthony. He, he. I'm so glad I'm here. One, one is too small a group to produce greatness. We got to group up if we're going to grow up. And I want to grow up, so I got to group up with just like you. Good to see all of our senior brethren here. Brother Lumpkin, I'm glad to see here. you here. I love that man. You know, Brother Lumpkin, time is a great healer, but it's a, pu it's a poor beautician. <laughs> we know that, don't we? Yeah, we both, yeah, that's right. I'm just glad wrinkles don't hurt. Oh, praise God. Can I preach to you a little bit? Can I preach to you a little bit? The old time Pentecostal gospel. The thing that found me 49 years ago. I would have been anything in the world but what I am. If you have your Bibles, turn. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 17. From the 17th of Matthew, verse 20. Jesus said it to them because of your unbelief. Hmm. Background. They had been on the Mount of Trigger Transfiguration, seen a lot of glory and power, been close to the dynamo, came down, didn't bring enough of it down with them to deliver one boy. They were just enjoying the presence without assimilating the power. And the fellow said, uh, you know, your fellows couldn't do it. This is not my sermon, but they went on down, found another fellow doing it. But because he didn't have a fellowship card, they said, we got a man out there that's not with us. And he's doing what we couldn't do. Jesus said, leave him alone. Criticism number one. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, they wanted to know why we couldn't do it. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder, to yonder place. Everything has its place. And it shall be removed. Even obstacles, mountains, Barriers have their place. It shall be moved. 
and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and by fasting. How can we do it, Jesus? We, we are dim lights in a dark world. We failed at the very thing you called us to do. If you have faith, it's a grain of mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder, and it, it's going to be done. What is the it? It's neuter gender. And this incident in the Incent in the Greek, it can both be male, female, or totally neuter. And it, whatever you're thinking about right now is your it. Anybody got an it here that you wish would go yonder? <laughs> I want to talk to you. And years ago, I used to preach a subject by this name, but that's not the subject. It's, a little, it's different today. I want to talk to you about breaking the faith barrier. Breaking the faith barrier. These it's that are in our way. These mountains that are stopping us and seem insurmountable. What does it take if an if moving an it he gives us an if that can move an it and an it is concrete and an if is iffy yeah. <laughs> but Jesus ifs can do more than the devil's is <laughs> let's pray together father we need you The word of the Lord have free course today. For the glory of God, I take dominion over any spirit that would oppose the work of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of the Lamb. I come against any spirit that would oppose the work of the Holy Ghost in your life and in this service by the power of the blood and by the power of the name and by the power of the word of the living God and by the power of the holy angels that minister to us who are the heirs of salvation. By God's grace, we're going to break the faith barrier and go to the next level. You may be seated. A mountain. That's quite a barrier. Somebody said, Brother Denny, I got a mighty rough mountain to climb. Well, you better thank God for it. You couldn't climb a smooth one. What would you hold on to? If we got to, if there's going to be one, it better be rough. And the rougher it is, the easier to climb. The only thing that keeps us from going yonder, the yonder of God, is this it. What is my it? Well, it's whatever you're thinking of right now. What is it that breaks the barrier, moves the mountain? Jesus said, if you have faith, faith is kingdom currency. Oh, Brother Tenney, I've got the name. Brother Ray Johnson said a lot for us. He didn't just say use the name. He said, and that name through faith. The name will not work without faith. Well, I'll pray. Wait a minute. The book says it's the prayer of faith. It's not just articulating words. It's the faith dimension that energizes prayer. It's the faith dimension 
that activates angels and brings them into the war zone of our life is faith. My personal opinion is that there are dimensions and levels of the operation of faith. Jesus mentioned fruit. He spoke of more fruit and much fruit. And he mentioned, Paul mentioned in 117 of Romans, Romans 117, he mentioned of going from faith to faith. So there must be levels of faith. Faith to faith. He mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, a faith growing exceedingly. Well, then faith is not static. It grows. There's some type of spiritual miracle growth that enhances the growth of faith and makes it multi-level. Well, what is it that causes us to break forth from one level of faith and one dimension of faith into the higher dimensions and to move from level to level until we get to that highest dimension of faith? And I don't have time to go into this, but the, the, the seventh level, which is propagated by pure love and pure love alone. Galatians 5 and 6 said, that faith works by love. Now we know it takes faith to make the name work. It takes faith to make the word work. But what makes faith work? Paul said faith works by love. And you have to break certain barriers to enter in to that love dimension. That's love without an agenda. That's love that cannot have reasons. It's the ultimate. In the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy, in verses seven and eight, the Lord told Israel that he loved them without a reason. <laughs> it was the level of power that Christ met when he exploded in resurrection glory. This love dimension of faith is the last power level available to the church. And it leads to resurrection power. Paul said that I might know him. I might know him. He said there's something I yet won't. And the power of his resurrection. He said I am stretching for that resurrection level. And there's always a stretch. That the child that died, the prophet went in. The Bible said he stretched himself over the child. Why would a grown big prophet stretch over a little child? It looked like he would shrink to match him. But you always stretch for a miracle. And to reach the power dimension of love. And the God, in my opinion, is trying to move the entire body to advance and take dominion and reclaim and restore. He is trying to get us into the next level of faith. The level operated by pure love without an agenda. The level that doesn't care who gets the glory as long as the job is done and Christ is honored. The level that's generated by forgiveness. Jesus as a man, now as a man, first introduced us to resurrection power. And notice this. The last things he said. Father, forgive them. Were they asking him to forgive? No. And when he said that, he said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Is our spirit clean enough for us to put it in God's hands? Whenever you reach the dimension of love that this book is talking about, your spirit is so pure until you could say, here God, you can have it. I have totally forgiven. Forgiveness has become a lifestyle. I am operating on 
pure love. Breaking the faith. And when he did, he broke into resurrection power. And we're stretching today. The Lord has made me to know, now it may be just for me, that I have got to break in to the next level. I have got to break the barrier. And he's, he has indicated to me, Brother Barnes, that he's trying to move the entire body into this dimension. And, and when it happens, hell will know no, no fury like it's going to be unleashed. Because he said the gates of hell shall not prevail. And you know what we say? Well, we got to go knock down the gates of hell. We don't need to knock them down. We've got the keys. We got the keys. Jesus gave us. And when we reach the level that he is in, hallelujah, he'll just say, here's the key. You'll not go unlock. God's got a key to every city. He's got a key to every ministry. And if it'll work in the gates of hell, it'll work anywhere. Angels come to move rocks and mountains like they did at the tomb of Jesus. When you're in this dimension and hear this preacher, I have not apprehended that for which I have been apprehended. But forgetting those things that are behind, I press, I climb, I strive, whatever's in me, I want to break the barrier and reach the next level of faith. Because everything in the book and the spirit operates and is energized by faith. You know where the, the term breaking the barrier came from? 1947, a test pilot by the name of Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier for the first time in history. And it was the start of a new era. And it was the beginning of what we now know as supersonic flight. Now before Jaeger, pilots had taken planes near the speed of sound. Several had. But every time they got there to that barrier, they experienced frightening vibrations. Horrible noises. And fear set in. And something said the whole thing is going to fall apart. You've gone too far. And even the scientists could not tell them what would happen because nobody had ever done it and they couldn't risk it. I'm telling you, God is looking for risk in men today. <laughs> men and women that want to push on, that never want to stop in the comfortable places, uh, that are satisfied with nothing but the ultimate. And nobody changes unless he faces reality. There's something out there I don't yet possess. I've got to break the faith barrier. Now the men that fail. A true leader is never just a maintenance man. Never just reaches a plateau and gets satisfied. You see, it's hard to transfer a vision, especially to men who can barely see beyond their own blistered feet. I've seen men start out well and get excited about the moving of God, but they stop before they reach the top. Barriers, hit plateaus, comfortable, feed the flesh. Unwilling to press on to the supernatural. Stand, sit in the bleachers and keep score. Because nobody knew for certain what was going to happen when they broke the barrier of sound. And one day, Chuck Yeager was out there and he radioed back said, I'm going to go for it. And he went for it. He said when he reached that peak, he said the plane started shaking and rattling. And the whole thing crumbled as if every bolt was going to come loose. 
And he said, fear set in. But he said, I made up my mind. It's there and it's now or never and somebody's going to have to do it. And he shoved in the afterburner. And he broke the sound barrier. And suddenly, everything was quiet and smooth. <laughs> Comfortable. And you know what they heard on earth? An explosion. Boom. Somebody said, it exploded. It's falling to pieces. I told you it wouldn't work. But somebody had broken the barrier. I'm listening for sonic booms this morning. Somebody that said, I'm going for it. Perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. It's the love dimension. That'll take fear out of you. You know, nobody would have blamed Christopher Columbus after all his trouble if he'd have turned back. But nobody would have remembered him either. Nobody, nobody to blame Chuck Yeager. Others had tried. What's going on in the Holy Spirit? Things that lend themselves to the truth can be outlined. But not the Spirit. You can take doctrinal truth, theology, and outline it. But you have to try to outline the Spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and the wind bloweth where it's least resisted. Where somebody's willing to take a little risk. And maybe things are going to shake and rattle a little bit, and somebody's going to say the whole thing's coming apart. Ain't going to work. When this thing, uh, Brother Manga, took off here, started reaching for that level. He's dead, rest his soul. He lived long enough to find out he was wrong. Our superintendent that day said, he won't last six months. That's what he said. That's what he said. How long ago has that been? Well, it's been 1950. Years. 50 years. 50 years. Good, honest man. But what that man was talking about doing had not been done. Not in Alexandria. Preacher's graveyard. Much trouble. But somebody said, it's got to be done. And if you don't have a vision, if you're not hungry for what I'm talking about, we've got to have a return for hunger. It's going to take the vision. But vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. You look before you. You look within you. And you look behind you. What does God's future promise? What is God doing now? What has he done in the past? Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you've got to go home and transfer this vision. Church, we've got to go to the next level. <laughs> A pure love and forgiveness and acceptance. God's going to do in these last days is going to shake whole denominations. The book Revelation said that in the last days God's going to give some people nations. Entire nations are going to be shaken by what God is going to do. But we're going to have to break the barriers of faith. Yes, I believe. instant what we're interested in is breaking into the now of God everybody say now Hebrews 11 and 1 now faith and we talk about what faith can do but we forget it starts off with the word now we got to break into now faith 
We got to break into the now plans of God. Naaman the leper said, now I, I know. A few verses before he had said, behold I thought. But your behold I thought has got to become now I know. I have broken into the faith barrier. I know. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, now is the accepted time. There is a now faith. There is a now of God's plans. And there is a now of timing. And we've got to bring our God and our now to this world. And there are some now barriers. Forty-seventh of Ezekiel, Bible said Ezekiel stood before the door again, and under that door was coming water. I'd never noticed it some months ago. The word again. How many times had he, the angel, brought him to that door? How many times have we been brought to the door? And we were satisfied with just getting the soles of our feet wet with what was coming underneath the threshold. Well, it took him then to the brink. And he had been to the brink before. How many times have we been to the brink of the river? But been afraid to dive in because nobody's done it before. And we don't know what might happen. And we might be criticized. Fear. Angel, why don't you break the door down? No, I can just point the way. I'm a ministering spirit to you. You're supposed to do it. With only the soles of his feet wet, finally he said, I, I, I'm going to get out in it. And he got ankle deep. And he went for 1,000 cubits. That's a half a mile. And nothing happened. He said, I'm still just ankle deep. This ain't working. This ain't working. Angel said, keep it going. Oh, God, I'm so tired. Went another half a mile. Finally, it got to his knees. Nobody's ever done it. Now, you're going to break the barrier? Well, I'm knee deep. I'm satisfied. You know, look what I've got. At least I've got them to pray. And, and, uh, but is it the prayer of faith? Just keep it going. And he said, finally, I got, whoop, I got it up to my loins. That's reproductive. I've begun to have a little revival, you know. And the few getting saved. I could stop here and play around. But I'm still touching bottom. I'm in control. I can do what I want to do. And something nudged him. Said, now, nobody's ever done it before. But keep a waiting. And he said, finally, I fell off into something that was so deep until I couldn't get over it. And I hope that something happens it because of the times that you cannot get over waters to swim in and all he could do was flow in the Holy Ghost he broke the barrier anybody here want to go to that next level that river went there was healing there's barriers of fear negation I wonder if we patterned our ministries after ministers who believed it but saw it more as a doctrine than a demonstration have we fallen into the doctrine minus demonstration dimension? Are we in the gospel business or the gospel ministry? Paul said, I come to you not only in word, but in demonstration and power. And to preach only the word that Paul preached and not have his demonstration is to believe only half of his gospel. I heard a preacher the other day said that God spoke to him. I'll take his word for it. And that God said to him, What you are teaching is my word. But ministry function can't be found in it. Hmm. Word without demonstration. You know, we say, well, you know, preacher, Satan's alive and well on the planet earth no satan is not alive and well on the planet earth jesus mortally wounded him he's been his head is bruised he's brain damaged he's a defeated foe and all we got to do is demonstrate what jesus has already done 
And the best way to defend the truth is to declare it without compromise. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. There's still power in the name of There's still victory in the name of There's still healing in the name of Oh, hallelujah. May we break beyond the word barrier. We've not been called to apologize for what God has done, but to proclaim it. And I don't want to limp into the 21st century. I want to leap into the 21st century. Okay, let me give you something to criticize. The original emphasis of Jesus was not the erecting of buildings. It wasn't even a particular strategy or organization. He just simply said, go. And what part of the word go don't you understand? But he said, don't you go until you've made a trip to the upper room and broken the faith barrier. He gave them a promise, but they had to pray the promise into existence to get into the power dimension. And it's not enough just to go quoting the name and the promises if you haven't entered the power dimension. It's not an option. It's a must. Don't leave Jerusalem without it. Because you can't break the barriers without it. He even said, talking about the Lord of the harvest, he said, no, no, before you do anything, pray. The Lord of the harvest. That's the first thing. Just pray. Fear sees what man sees, but faith sees what God sees. You know, by faith, Joseph gave commandment concerning his bones. And Joseph died in Egypt at age 110. But he, he, he wouldn't be found dead in Egypt. He was a man that lived for tomorrow. He was a man of faith at the age of 110. And a man of faith at the age of 110 is younger than a critical teenager. Numbers chapter 14, things wasn't going for good, so good in the church. The wilderness. And they got a little group together and said, we need to choose a new leader. We need new leadership. Somebody take us back to Egypt. And maybe there's some here hungering for a position in the ministry. And maybe you're hungering, oh, if I could just get a church. And sometimes there's a group of people that will choose you to lead them backwards. Don't do it. Don't ever be elected to lead somebody back to where they once were. Because God's not going back to old dead sacerdotal drudgery. <laughs> From here on out, it's the power dimension. <laughs> it's a hell-shaking dimension. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's an Ethiopia in the United States. Did you hear me? It's an Ethiopia in the United States because the Bible said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm going to pour out my spirit, not sprinkle it out. I'm going to pour out my spirit. We've got to break the barrier and get into the next dimension. Never let structure call for revival, but you let revival call for structure. And Moses had heard this business about getting somebody to take us back. They fell on their knees and went to praying in front of the whole assembly. And they prayed it through. We're not going back. There are three... Greek words, and I've told you before, I only know enough Greek to be dangerous. <laughs> Sometimes they're translated power. One of the words is exousia, and it means authority. The other word is energia, and it means power and action that comes from another source. Like you get in the car, and you drive it, but it's the car that's got the power. In fact, we get the word engine from that energia. And the last one is dunamis, which means inherent power. 
It's power that becomes a part of you. It's not just words spoken in authority. It's not coming from an external source, but it's something that's in you. It's the highest dimension of power. And in Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said, you shall receive power. And the word was dunamis. My ultimate for you is dunamis. It's where we get our word dynamite. And dynamite is what moves mountains. But you can't move a mountain until you get to the dunamis dynamite dimension. And we got too many preachers operating in the energy dimension. If they can get a lot of hype stirred up, they think they got power. Or the authoritative, if they can get people thinking and our arid intellectualism won't get us anywhere. You never will figure God out. You can worry till you wear a, a corn on your brain and you won't figure God out. His ways are above our ways. But when you get to that inherent dimension, when there's just something in you that says, go for it, go for it, no fear. I don't care how it rattles. I don't care what it sounds like. Go for it. It's in my heart. God sent me here. And I'm not stopping till I break the bay. It's the power of the resurrection that knocks the rock off the door. And Jesus has already proven he's not comfortable in grave clothes. Paul said in the book of Romans, he spoke of his eternal power and Godhead. Now, I don't want to offend anybody, but there is a dimension of power that goes with the truth of the Godhead. Power connected with a true revelation of who Jesus is. Jesus is not Jehovah Junior. He is not one third of God. He is holy, solely, fully, absolutely, and completely God. He is the God man. Oh, Brother Tenney, you don't believe in the Father. I do believe in the Father. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. But in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And with that revelation, that revelation and faith in that revelation comes a dimension of undivided power and anointing. Because He said, if I be lifted up, Please, please, I'm not, I, I'm not making fun. I told you this last year. I'm going to tell you again. The, the, the devil's called the father of liars. The devil's called the son of perdition. The devil's called an evil spirit. But you never heard anybody say there was three in the devil head. <laughs> Hallelujah. God revealed himself as Father in creation, Son in redemption, Holy Spirit in regeneration. But it's all in him. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And he said, in that revelation, there is eternal power. That doesn't indicate we're supposed to be mean. But we got a hungry world. You see people standing in the line starving to death. You don't go out and hand out menus and recipes and say, wouldn't this be good? Read the menu. They want something to eat. And when people are desperately hungry, they forget etiquette and manners. I mean, when the door opened to Samaria and they heard there was food out there, even when, when it came from the mouth of four old lepers, they forgot manners and they went to running because there's bread in the camp. You get bread and power in the camp and they'll come from everywhere. They don't care how much education you got, where you came from, if there's bread in the camp. They'll run over one another. What's happening today? It's what's happening today in our churches coincide 
with the released power of the book of Acts. The Bible said what happened in the book of Acts was moderate to what God wants to do in the latter days. Now, in, in, uh, in third world countries, we've jumped from 3,000 like they did in the book of Acts, and then they had 5,000, then 8,000. Then the count was lost. The Bible said they were added to the church, and then the Bible said they were multiplied. And then they were mul multitudes, and the count was lost. There should be a cry in our hearts for apostolic power. A cry for the restoration and operation truly of the Christ's glorifying gifts of the church. And you need to ask yourself, what I believe, is it preference or principle? Is it taste or truth? And in my misunderstanding, my taste and calling the truth, I learned a long time ago what some people call standing for the truth is, is standing for the way they see it. I'm not thirsty, just thinking. <laughs> well, one thing I'm preaching to you now is the truth. There is a power dimension of love. And it is an uncompromising dimension. But it, do we have it? Are, are we making room for everything God said He's going to do in the last days? He said He was going to pour out His Spirit in the last days. He said our sons and our daughters... We're going to prophesy. I saw several young ladies stand up here that God had called them to the ministry. One of them I met, and she's having great revivals. People are getting the Holy Spirit baptism. I was saved under a woman's ministry. What's wrong with us? Oh, you didn't shout much on that, but it's biblical. Do we have apostolic power? How long has it been since my shadow has healed anyone? How long has it been since I've said, Tabitha, arise? How long has it been since a jailhouse quaked because I prayed? If it did, I'd want to sell tickets for a guided tour. <laughs> jailhouse barriers were broken. Death barriers were broken and healing barriers were broken and it's happening today. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, God is going to lift this church into a new level of faith. We're moving from faith to faith. But hear me, with new levels come new devils. Did you hear me? With new levels come new devils. Chuck Vincent sign in is the world's leading Pentecostal historian. He teaches up at Regent College. I, I told you a part of this. He came to our camp meeting a couple of years ago as an academic uh, uh, observer. Here's what he told me. He said, the last day revival is going to come through the classical Pentecostal churches. Not, now he said this, and if this is tape sent over, he'll be criticized. He said, it's not going to be the charismatics. He said, because they are not educated in and do not understand all the dimensions of the Spirit. And they're afraid, and sometimes they toy with one thing and toy with another thing that we've already been educated in. And sometimes we criticize them and their babyhood for things that we've done. I heard somebody the other day making fun of people falling out. Brother Mangan, have you ever seen, have you ever seen in Pentecost the, a whole congregation just fall out like cordwood when the power of God moved in? And I heard another preacher making fun of holy laughter. Where have y'all been? I've been in services where holy laughter hit. And I mean, we took them home laughing. <laughs> and they were as drunk as Cooter Brown. They couldn't stand up. They were hooked. They were addicted. I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that. Hallelujah. I want to take everything we have with what we know about it into the next level. Yeah. 
it's estimated. I got 10 minutes and I got to get out of here. No, I got 10 minutes because Brother Anthony said. It is. Well, I told you and Brother Urson, you had as long as you want. That I told the other guys 55 minutes. I said, you and Brother Urson had as long as you want. You did not tell the truth. Right. Right. Let's tell the truth. All right. We'll just stay the rest of the afternoon then. <laughs> did you know that it's now estimated... You're going to have to repent or you won't get to that next level for that, that bad spirit you got. Oh, I love that guy. There's nothing like him. It's, it's estimated that there's six billion people on planet Earth. It's stated that two billion of these are so-called Christians. But now listen to this. Now these are not statistics that came from Pentecost, but from statisticians. There are now five out of the two billion so-called Christians, there are five million four hundred Pentecostals of some type. And it is reported that out of this 540 million, that over 50 million of them are in China. Forty percent of Guatemala claims to be born again, most of them Pentecostal. El Salvador is 22 percent, most of them Pentecostals. Nicaragua, 24 percent of them evangelicals, most of them Pentecostals. There's more than 25 million Pentecostals added to the ranks yearly. It's, it's been called the most explosive Christian movement in the 20th century. One leading magazine said that what happened at Azusa Street and the beginning of Pentecostalism was one of the top 20 phenomena of this entire century. We now have third world countries sending missionaries out. But so when I read about this in other countries and in the Philippines and in Ethiopia, I want to break into the dimension that brings it to North America where we will focus on the harvest and the harvest alone will dominate our plans and our strategies as we approach the millennium. That's what this man was telling us about. Our focus has got to be on the harvest. <laughs> the harvest. The harvest. And somehow we've got to change the concept of the church from an audience to an army. You know what we have in Pentecost? We've got too many pew potatoes. You mean couch potatoes, no pew potatoes. They come in, sit down, and try to remote God. I don't like that song, well mute it. I don't like that preacher, change churches. That's too loud, cut it down. Don't have a remote God. Uh, the wind blows where it lifts up. Get in and find waters to swim in. <laughs> Quit trying to remote your pastor. Brother Tenney, what do you know about that? Well, I can read. I tell you, I wish what was written over some of our Gone with the Wind. Now, I know Gone with the Wind's a movie. I saw it. Oh, you saw the video. No, I didn't see the video. I saw the movie, 1939. <laughs> Boy, they thought they had me. I know a lot. I, I'm not dated. I know, I know a lot about John Wayne and Betty Davis and Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy and the Ink Spots and the Andrew Sisters and Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. And I'm not dated. But in those days, in, in, a, in, in a movie, a, a horse without a saddle was obscene.
But I'm telling you, you got to do something to get people's attention today when they come out of the world into your church and you've had all that competition and there's nothing like a power encounter when they get a taste of this. My God, that means nothing. That means nothing. They don't want it anymore. Woo! Ah, we got to break the faith barrier! And we don't have to compromise to be recognized. And we face risky business, but there'll be no business without risk. And we need to be bunching up together. Because Satan always targets fellowship for destruction. And he knows that it's Good even for extremes to be brought together in prayer and under the auspices of the word. One of the most dangerous things in the world for men who hold extreme positions to do is to only flock with their kind. I don't care what kind of extreme it is, right, left, north, south, east, west. We need to recognize one another, love one another. Before we reach this love dimension of power that I'm talking about, I can accept you and love you without agreeing with all your interpretations of the book of Revelation. You know, some of you claim you're going all the way through the tribulation. Well, God bless you. I hope you believe in video and take some pictures and bring them up there to show them to us that's already gone. So we'll see what happens. But that's my opinion. I got a ticket on the first thing leaving. advises us to preserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace he doesn't even say the bond of common doctrine there may be a few little petty things we don't agree on but he said in the bonds of peace and, and that's because brethren James said you can only sow in peace and if we're at peace with one another then we're able to grow together in the understanding of truth but if we're not at peace with one another then we can't grow in truth you might have something that's true that I need. You can help me. But we got to have peace. I didn't say it, Paul did. And I know times change. My mother used to tell me that the paper money was bad. She said, germs are on dollar bills. Well, that's not true. Even, even today, a germ couldn't live on a dollar. Things change. We got to have proclamation over presentation. It's not how well you do it, it's what are you doing. Not how big a crowd you get, but what did the crowd get? And was Jesus glorified? And we can put too much emphasis on the me rather than the he. Brother Mangan, you're so sweet. I appreciate you, but I have got to get out of here. <laughs> but I hear a noise, and I feel a shaking, and I'm listening to voices. We're going to fall apart. We better be careful. You know what I'm saying? We're getting ready to go to the next dimension. What God's doing today is transracial, transsocial, transcultural, transgenerational, transdenominational. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ went through Samaria to talk to a Samaritan woman to prove that he was unprejudiced, and prejudice is sin. Whosoever will, let him come 
and drink of the waters of life freely. There shall be light in the evening time, Zechariah 14 and 7. Hear this. There shall be one Lord and his name shall be one, Zechariah 14 and 9. We're still in Zechariah. Zechariah 12 and 2, there's coming a latter rain. Well, all of this together says in Zechariah, in the time of the latter rain, he said there is going to be light, and that light is going to be on the one Lord and the oneness of his name. And we're in the latter rain, and the light is going to come. Jesus is glorified in earth. He's got to be glorified in the church. Every difficulty is an answer trying to be born. Thirty-five thousand people a day in the world are coming to the Pentecostal experience. Sit down. My last examples. Been preaching. 55 minutes. Thank you. But I'm telling you, in the Holy Ghost, Brother Barnes, something in me says that he wants to lead a church before he comes to that seventh dimension where the entire body will operate in forgiveness and in the power of perfect love and a resurrection authority. And there'll be no competition to churches that have that dimension of God. You won't need to compromise because you won't have any competition. One biblical example of a man that broke the faith barrier. His name was Elijah. Faith is like freedom. It's got to be fought for by succeeding generations. Never won conclusively. Faith is the only thing that moves God or moves mountains. If you have faith, you can say to this mountain, we got, we're living in a world of gray where everybody takes the twilight position. They got plenty of opinions but little convictions. And one man talked to a fellow and that fellow, yeah, that's right. Another man come along another way, yeah, that's right. Pusillanimous social gospel equivocators, oozing with isms, whittling nothing off to a point, splitting hairs a mile long, quartering them, and then rehairing, rehairing the quarter that you split. Do you know what you believe? First thing you better make up your mind is what you believe. And speak the truth in love. Elijah prayed, and he prayed directly. And he wasn't just binding the enemy. The enemy was defeated. Our, our brother Keys last night dealt so beautifully with Luke 10, 19. He's given us power. But the authority is not just for us to use our own initiative, our own discretion. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20 tells us we're ambassadors. And it's the same thing that means we have inherent power. Elijah had been told by God he was authorized to do warfare prayer. And as servants, we've got to be submissive to his reign over our own presumption. Now, God had already said it was going to rain, but he had to pray the promise into existence. And just because you drive in one side of town with a promise from God doesn't mean the devil drives out the other side. But he had, was a unique intercessor, this fellow Elijah. There have been categorized 850 verses in the Psalms that deal directly 850 verses that deal directly with the enemy and warfare. Although surrounded by the enemy, the psalmist talks a lot about him. But his words are almost always directed to God. There's only nine occasions or about 1% of the time where the psalmist speaks directly to the enemy. 99% of the time he's talking to God. And after that much direct contact with God, when he was authorized to bind the influence of the territorial spirits and speak to political identities, great things happened. But it was only after great prayers and in intercessions. Not just saying it to the devil. Right. 
Now, this fellow Elijah. This, this is recorded, so let me tell you something. I fear inst institutionalization more than I fear anything else. Where we think more of the institution than we do the Lord. And we've got too many company prophets that only belch out what they're told to belch out. I wasn't made out of that kind of stuff. That's not the way I was raised. And I know I'm a religious bureaucrat and I'm not trying to impress anybody. But some people don't have enough faith to produce enough fog to fog the windows of their own soul. I'm going to tell you the difference. The boys in politics are, are those that want a position to be something. But the men are those who want a position to do something. And I have a passion for Jesus and a passion for this truth. And I'm telling you, I'm not at the level that I'm preaching about. But I'm reaching. And Elijah prayed. <laughs> he prayed. The, the fire had fallen and Israel who had gone into apostasy. He had already shut off and stopped the rain. Can you imagine him when he went into the king and said, It ain't going to rain no more unless I say so. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. Not unless I say so. Right. Henry, you and your buddy there, bring your chair. Come up here. Those chairs, they're not hooked, are they? No, quick, 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 quick. Uh -huh. I'm in a hurry. Help me. That's right. Put up here. S sit right there. You sit over there. All right. This is God. This is Michael Gable. Elijah walks in. The king. Not going to rain anymore till I say so. Gable looks at Mike. Ask him. Said, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn around and say, did you tell him to say that? Did you tell him to say that? Said, tell him, no, I didn't tell him to say that. <laughs> come here, God. Come here, come here. Get up, Michael and Gable. They look over the side of the mountain and the, uh, uh, the hill and look down there and say, But you know what, boys? The Lord said, He believes it. <laughs> He's broken the faith barrier. Boom! Whoa, what do you want us to do, Lord? He says to Michael and Gable, Shut off the waterworks. It ain't going to rain unless He says so. He broke the faith barrier. I mean, He, he altered the economy of a nation. <laughs> Sit back down. to satisfy an ordinary man and he was on the side of a mountain but Elijah said I'm not satisfied but don't you hear him shouting Jehovah's God Jehovah's God there's one God there's one God that's right but there's nothing but dust it's dry truth and that's not enough what you gonna do Elijah the Bible said he went up to the very top he said I'm going to the next level I'm going to the next level I'm going to the next level they've got I've got them back to the truth but I'm going to the next level and he went up to the next level Sit down. Whew. You know what he did? Come here, young man. Sit down right there. Sit down. Turn, 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 turn your feet around this way. Put your head between your knees. That was a position he got in. You know what that was? That was a birthing position for a woman. Boy, does God know how to humiliate us. That's enough. He got in a birthing position because he had a promise. He, was, he had the gestation of the promise. And he said, I'm here till I bring it to pass. God said for me to go show myself to the king and it is going to rain. Hallelujah. And he went and showed himself. You can go sit down. And he went to praying. Rain! Rain, 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 rain. Come here again. You're my servant. Uh, run right over there and run back. Run, 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 run back. And he comes back. Come on, come on back. And he says, well, what did you see? And he said, nothing. Say nothing. Uh, 
Nothing. Are you saying about it? Nothing. You didn't say nothing. They've been up there all day long. You ought to be satisfied. They're down there shouting as one God. The fire's already fallen, but it's dry truth. And I'm telling you, God said it was going to rain, and I'm going to pray till it rains. <laughs> Persistence breaks the faith barrier. Not being satisfied at one plateau, wanting the next level breaks the faith barrier. Faith, 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 faith. Hila Boshaya Mahaya. He Kana Mohaya Mahanda. Haka Moshika. What would you do if you were Satan and, and, and you were defeated and bound? You know what you'd do? You would blind the eyes of the church to that defeat. And as long as they didn't see you as a defeated foe, you'd hold mental power over them. That's why Paul said, who's bewitched you? <laughs> Persistence. Not satisfied where you are. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Pray! Rain, rain, rain. That's all Elijah was saying. Rain, rain. Go look again. I can tell you what he's going to see. Nothing. Six times he went. <sighs> Hadn't rained in three and a half years. History said it's not going to rain. He had to break the historical barrier. And every time he brought down his fist to pray, dust hit him in the face. That's earth. Earth said, it ain't going to rain here. Hallelujah. He looked up in the heavens. They were azure blue, not a cloud. The heavens said, it's not going to rain here. The reports of his peers around him said, I don't see a thing. Now everybody around him said, no rain. Heaven said, no rain. Earth said, no rain. History said no rain, but Elijah said rain, 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 rain. Persistence of believing, holding on, not satisfied. Rain, rain. Everybody say rain. rain. Say it again. Rain. Say it again. Rain. Wait a minute. Where you're pastoring now, it never has rained. There's been so many failures, it never has rained. Hey, come on back up here. Come on back up here, it never has rained. Uh, and everybody around you says you can't have revival there. Peer pressure says, uh, why don't you just leave there and get out of there? Why don't you give up the evangelistic work and look up at heaven? My God, uh, heaven must be brass. And everything around me is dry. My sermons are dry. And uh, my prayer life is dry. But there he was. Rain, 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 rain. And about that time, boom, shake those chairs. Come on. Boom, boom. What happened? And Elijah was on earth, and Michael and Gabriel jumped up, and they run over here and look. Come on, God. And said, well, what is it? And the Lord said, well, that's Elijah. He broke the faith barrier. And he said, rain. Well, Lord, what you want us to do? Shut on the waterworks. It's a fixing to rain. Broke the faith barrier with persistence, with prayer, not being satisfied, climbing, 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 one prayer. Okay, fellas. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to him. You're going to the next level. a name that's better than rain and what is that name yeah. just remain standing finally the servant came back you know faith is reaching up and taking hold of nothing and holding on till it becomes something and he had six handfuls of nothing Nothing, 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 nothing. But he held on to nothing to the fellow God back and said, Well, whew, said, maybe if I tell him this, he'll go home. He said, There's a little cloud about like a man's hand. What? Elijah said, That's it. 
But it's over, he said, at the Mediterranean. He said, uh-uh, it's coming this way. And it was looked like a man's hand. So his hand of faith reached up and Elijah's faith and prayer wrapped around it and said, come on, little cloud. You're coming right over here to Mount Carmel. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on from Ethiopia. Come on. Come on from Ethiopia. Come on, come on from Philippine Islands. Come on, you're coming to Texas. You're, you're, you're coming to Canada. You're, you're, you're coming to Maine. And, and you're, 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 you're coming to Arkansas. Come on, come on. I'm going to break the barrier. And we're going to have here what you promised us that we're going to have. And we're holding on. We got enough to hold on to. We got a sign. And we're holding on and holding on and holding on. Anybody here need a rain where you are? Come on, reach up like this. Reach up. Now take a hold of it. And by faith, pull it to your city. Pull it to your ministry. I'm going to break the faith barrier. It's there. It's there. It's for me. I got it. Has there anybody here got a hold to something? It may not look like, it may look like nothing, but I got a hold to something. And when I got a hold to something, it may look like nothing to you. Uh, the little boy called it nothing, but I'm a holding on. I'm a holding on. It's going to rain, Brother Cole. It's going to rain in Ethiopia again. It's going to rain in this coming crusade like it's never rained before. It's going to rain in Alexandria like it's never rained before. It's going to rain in Apopka. It's going to rain in De Quincey. Hey, North Carolina. Florida. You tell Ahab to get off this mountain because this dust is about to turn into mud. And the hand of the Lord was on old Elijah and he outran the prophets and was the first to the city. And when the hand of the Lord's on you, you'll outrun the mechanized group and be the first one to the city of revival. Give, and it shall be given. We can stop right now. Shout, but do we have faith enough to believe God to provide for the needs? of others who are here that want to go representing us. Good to shout about it. But do we have faith to say, I'm going to take them on. I'm going to do something. But then I don't have nothing. That's where faith begins. But we need finances in our church. I challenge you. If God moves on you, give and see what will happen. Let me tell you what. Right out there on our campground, you know what we need? We need one million dollars. We got so much stuff. I don't have time. We need one million dollars. I'm praying for a million dollars for some things that's got to be done. But you, you just give. And that helps break the faith bearer. Because he said, when you give and it comes back, good measure. Press down, just falling out. Hello, Yashaya Mahaya. Hi, I feel the magnet of the Holy Spirit trying to lift us. And some are responding. They want that next level. They want it. They're hungry. Pastor Magnet. I owe you an apology, but it's time for you to come and do something that God's laid on your heart about helping these people. Here's where we're going to prove that we want to go to that next level. You've got to believe me. There's another level of faith. We've got to break every barrier to get there.